Max out family. Oh my gosh. I am so excited. I know you're like, Maya, stop being so corny. I really don't care. But I, hopefully you can tell the difference. We um, now have a mic. So the quality is going to be lit. And we're also recording live. <laughs> so you're going to be able to watch this on YouTube and Facebook and like just all my social media platforms. So you can, you all can really see what it looks like to record a podcast. Um, um, and see like literally the inner workings of, of what I do was really kind of a little different because I am I'm having to look <laughs> and really kind of think about what I'm doing so it's different but you know it's, it's really cool and I'm, I am grateful for this opportunity to you know we like to start off every episode by just giving thanks I am so grateful to each and every one of you for your feedback for your listenership for just always being consistent and being here I am grateful please keep doing what you're doing I love to see it um two obviously is looking a little different today because we don't have a special guest in that is okay um i decided my heart was kind of be, being pulled in a different direction and our special guest uh Julio, he, he will definitely be back at some point and i definitely have plans on connecting with some other entrepreneurs and just people um just just to have a guest on here but for this particular episode i really felt like pulled in a different direction and what god wanted me to to speak about today and when I announce the topic, please don't like for my people who are not in this particular season, don't run off, don't cut off the episode because I'm, I'm deaf. I can still speak to you because at the end of the day, I'm about to tell you what the topic is before I even like say the actual topic. The topic is we're going to be talking about singleness. But at the end of the day, what I was going to say is until you get a, until you, I don't even want to say get a ring on your hand, but until you go up to an altar or whatever, and you sign them that marriage certificate and you make your declaration and really walk into this covenant with your spouse, then you are still single. And I want to talk about, you know, how to steward, you know, y'all know steward is one of my favorite words. I don't even think I want to come at it from that angle, but just really how to enjoy singleness and how to enjoy your single season. And really, honestly, I could say steward, how to steward that properly, because I think some of us look at and we, we, we've been taught to look at singleness as like this, like drab and jury thing. And oh my gosh, girl, I can't wait till I get a man or even, you know, our, our, we discussed this in our past two episodes, men are not taught you know, and they're not trained to, oh, I want to go get married. But at the end of the day, they know that they crave some sort of partnership or at least something or someone right so that's that send them to they still have that desire and I want to talk about you know that being a, a healthy desire but really just how to enjoy where you're at and I'm in a space of singleness now I know that may surprise some of you all because I've gotten so many DMs so many questions a lot of people have made the assumptions that oh Maya's going on all these dates that we keep singing and you know y'all y'all have seen the memes how when girls go out and she doesn't want to show the little boo that she's with so she makes it look like she's by herself let me say something y'all my map is by herself and i i'm learning to just and i'm I, I am learning but i've been doing it for so long i love to take myself out i love to love on me and i'm finally getting i will say this i am learning to get to a place to become comfortable enough to say that and not really care what anyone thinks of like oh my gosh like because I, I hear you know when, when when especially when women start to love on themselves and even my men when men start to love on themselves people are like oh well that's that's selfish or they like why are they doing that or why does she have to document that look what i always tell y'all try jesus not me period okay so <laughs> our topic for the day is singleness and we're going to come at it from two perspectives one from like um a biblical side and then one from just like how to have fun and like enjoy it and you know really discover more about yourself but from um, the biblical side I kind of touched on it a little bit but this is coming from Genesis 2 and 18 you know I got my my notes I always have my notes for my people that are actually well y'all don't know that because y'all never seen me but I have notes when I'm talking on this podcast but it says then the Lord God said it is not good that man should be alone I will make him a help make him a helper fit for him so this is when, you know, we're talking about Adam and Eve and God was getting ready to create Eve for Adam, da, 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 da. And the, I think a lie, and I'm, I'm, I've gotten this from the Gospel Coalition. Lie number one when it comes to singleness is that it's equivalent to being alone. You are never alone. And I've said this time and time and time and time again since I started this podcast. You're never alone. And when I, when I say that, I can 
again, we're on the, the biblical side of this when it comes to like God, like we are fickle people. Our thoughts are fickle. How we like our feelings are fickle, but God is always around. He's always with us. So you just have to remember that you're not alone. Not only that, like just because you're not in a relationship, that doesn't mean you're alone. Like you're still like some of us are sisters. Some of us are aunts. Some of us are cousins or daughters. Same for my, my, my men out there. Some of y'all are sons and uncles and brothers and all that good stuff. Y'all <laughs> hear my email in the background. It is what it is. You're not alone. So I do not believe that lie and do not think that you cannot enjoy this single season that you're in because you're al you're alone. Now, I do want to address that you can definitely feel alone while you're in this season, but there's a way to address that and to, to get around that and to really kind of like switch your, your perspective around, which we're going to talk about uh, a little later. Number two is that sometimes, not even sometimes, all the time we we see we place so much value in a role and i don't think she would mind me sharing this but one of my really good friends slash mentors um she is married she has a you know a beautiful family and we were she, at, off of you know breaking some bread having having a meal she had shared, you know, sometimes, and she won't mind me sharing, she, she'll listen to this podcast, but y'all don't know she is, so it works out perfectly. Um, she had shared with me, like, Maya, you know, don't be in such a rush to get to where you think you want to be. Like, because I was sharing, I think at this time, this was like over maybe a year and a half ago about like, oh, like, I can't wait to be a wife one day and to be a mom. And she was just like, not like a whole be careful what you ask for, but she really wanted to make sure that I was just okay with being where I'm at because she has those things already. And it's not that she's not appreciative. She loves having those um, those things, having a family. However, sometimes she wish she could just get up and go as she pleases, but I have the opportunity to do that now. She has to think about a, a certain amount of people before she makes a decision I have to think about myself and my dog like so there's so much freedom in singleness and don't take that because some people want to take it and twist it like i'm free to go live my life and do whatever i want to do and be out here in these streets absolutely not really it in <laughs> really it in really it in absolutely no i'm not saying you have that type of freedom because <laughs> you still want to like live right and do right but you have the the freedom to go really like Oh, I was like, I was like, you have the freedom to go do what you want to do, but you have the freedom to like really steward the season that you're in, like how you want to to do it, and you don't have to involve anybody else's opinions. Before I even move on to number three, I also want to touch on because we're coming from this, you know, biblical stance of um, singleness. I have found so much joy and so much peace, y'all. So much freaking peace and being able to really dive deep into my relationship with Jesus. And what I mean by this, I shared this, I think in the past two podcasts, is that when I am dating someone, now yes, I have picked, I, my map is on the picking and I always tend to pick wrong, which is why I'm sitting back and I'm gonna allow God to do that for me. But when I'm dating someone, I, I tend to just be less motivated to do the things that I have been called to do, I find myself less motivated to do like work. And I'm gonna be honest, um, and I can't believe I'm gonna share this with y'all, but I remember a few years back, I was dating this guy who was six years my senior. I 110% knew this guy was it, was the one, was my husband, sent from Jesus, that's what I thought. And I, at the time, still had aspirations to purchase my own home. I was young. I'm only 25 now. And this was a couple years ago. So I was still like 22, 23, still in grad school, but like was making plans to do that. But once I started dating this guy, I, allow, I allowed that plan to be put on the back burner because I'm like, oh, he's older than me. We'll just build a house together. We'll have babies. I'll be engaged by this time. We'll have our first child by here. We know we want a lot of land, all this stuff. And I decided to, to, to push the... The, the desires of my heart back because, oh, oh God, you're talking to me because I, I wanted to just 
be comfortable and I want it to fit into this space. I want, oh, come on. I want it to fit into that particular role as a girlfriend and hopefully as a soon to be wife. And that's not what my MAP was supposed to do. I wasn't supposed to do that. So going back to the, to the main point of, you know, we, we put so much value in a role of being a wife or being someone's partner that we, 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 we tend to put ourselves on the back burner. And then to that second point of the, of the actual, to that sub point of the second point, when I brought in like God and us being fickle and our thoughts being fickle and us not really diving as deep into our, our relationship with Christ when we're dating someone, we have to remember that God is a jealous God. I'm gonna break that down a little bit too. When I say God is a jealous God, I think sometimes people take it out of context and they they just literally think about like actual statues and like idols. What God means, and when it comes to idols, anything, ooh, anything that you put before him can be an idol. That can be your mama, that can be your daddy, that can be your husband, that can be your, your, your wife, that can be your kids, that can be your dog, it can be anything. Anything that you idolize, anything that you're consistently thinking about and that you're, you're putting all your energy towards and you don't think about anything else it can be money anything that you're that's an idol and God gets jealous over all of that and like I said God is never he doesn't go anywhere he doesn't he's, he's never changing <laughs> he's constant he's the one constant thing that we have and we're the one that's always doing doing the moving and oh He's about to take it somewhere. It's about to be good. When it comes to being in this single season, that's what I'm finding, you know, is so special. When I have the opportunity to dive deeper, to really get to know God for who God is, not the giver, not the, the, um, the, 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 I was I was about to say the blesser, but I'm like the blesser is not the <laughs> right word, but getting to know God for who he is, his character. Cause I want, I want godly character and that's a freedom. And that's an opportunity that I really have to hone into while I'm single. And I'm not saying, don't twist my words. I'm not saying that you can't do that when you have a partner, when you're in a relationship, you sure can, but there's other things that you're, you're having to balance. And right now in my single season, I ain't got nothing to balance, but me and Jesus. Okay. And two, if I do this correctly, let's talk about it. If I do this correctly in my season, in, in, in my single season, it's going to be much easier to find that balance when I enter into my next season because the foundation is built. The foundation is there. Point three on the biblical side of this is um, I think for like most godly good Christians, right? I'm, and I'm, if you hear me, I, I wish, if, if you're watching this, you can see me doing these, the quotation marks when I say good and godly, da 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 da. Because that's, ugh, the terminology is just ugh to me. But um, we are definitely, I think, trained and taught to think that marriage is a guarantee for everyone. And I wanna debunk that lie because it's not guaranteed because some people love to quote psalms 30 uh, 37 and 4 delight yourself in the lord and he will give you the desires of your heart and i'm going to read this actually word for word from uh, the gospel coalition because they really broke this down well sometimes people um conscript this verse to teach about marriage leaving many singles angry and bitter toward a god who never promised them marriage in the first place the truth is not all godly people get married we need to embrace this preach this and celebrate this god's best whoo let's talk about it for many will include a life without a spouse without a spouse and without a biological child or children these people will know him more deeply, serve him more powerfully, and experience greater joy than they could ever have, than they could ever, you know, do or, or experience as a married person. Not because singleness is better. Again, I want to make sure, not because singleness is better, but because marriage wasn't a part of God's plan for their life. No matter how deeply we desire it, ooh, scripture never guarantees marriage, but it does teach us to not be anxious for anything, 
but with prayer and supplication and with thanksgiving, make our request known to God and the peace of God will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. So that's Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Oh, with prayer and supplication. I think that is so dope how they shared um, that, that, that whole little section about really debunking this lie that everyone is promised marriage you, know, you don't want to get married but you know every you know if i'm a good person and this is a desire in my heart then i'm gonna get married like no that is not freaking true i'm sorry all my email keeps going off you would I, this thing's going to not disturb but um and it's after work hours so you would think it would not be emailing me but it, it is what it is but going back to my point um is that that's just not true for everyone. Yes, it can be a desire, but if you, and I, I'll never forget this, one of my good friends in college, I remember he said to me, and it's something that I know God had been working uh, on in my heart, I really had a really strong desire to be married and to be a mom and to be, um, to just to serve in that capacity for the longest of time, and especially it was really heavy in college. But I remember him, it was a guy, he shared this, he was just like, Maya, your desire to serve God and to love God has to be deeper and greater and more, more than as yeah, deeper and greater and more than your desire to be a wife and to be a mom. And I remember when he said that, I was so offended because I was like, what, what does that mean? I got, I would use that scripture. I would use <laughs> Psalms 37 and four. He'll give me the desires of my heart. But to debunk that, it's a really, and I'm so, I'm thankful for this wisdom and this knowledge and, and, really this breakdown that I'm able to share with you all, like my desire for Christ has to be more. Yes, those things are still a desire, um, but I trust God's plan for me and I trust his best for me. So if those things don't fall in, in, in his plan, then it's okay. And I can't believe I'm saying that because you see, I kind of, I kind of struggle with saying it, but that is so true. And that's, I can hold on to that truth because I know his best for me is the absolute best. It's better than I, what I, you know, better than I can imagine. I now I do believe again, I'm going to serve in those capacities, but my desire for him has to be more. Um, and I want to point four on the biblical side. And then we're going to go to like the, and I don't want to say the fun side, but to like reality, reality. Um, but point four is like, I think we definitely think that singleness equals loneliness and then marriage or partnership is supposed to equal happiness because that's what we see in movies. That's what we see in the media uh, 24 seven. Everyone's posting about it. We just got we just got out of February, the month of love and black history. Now we're into to women empowerment month in March. Ooh, 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 we love a new season, a renewal and restoration. But we really think marriage is supposed to be, you know, is the equivalent or that it equals happiness. And y'all, that's not true. You got plenty of married folks that literally look at single people and think that we're having the time of our, the time of our lives, which we are, some of us are. And you got single people who are looking at married folks that are, you know, thinking that they're having the time of their life. And was like, and it's so crazy. We all what we, we all want what we don't have. Didn't J. Cole say that? We all want what we don't have. We all think the the grass is greener on the other side until you get there. Y'all, it's gonna be greener wherever you water it. And I know that sounds uh, so cliche, but it's true. In this single season, I am watering myself every single day, every solo date I take myself on, every trip I take myself on, how I how I bathe myself, how I make my bed up, how I uh, you know literally craft my plate for dinner and for lunch and for breakfast, how I love myself, how I how I'm pouring into my relationship with Jesus and diving deeper with him every single day. My grass is green. It is wet. Because I'm watering it every single day. And there's some marriages out there that are, are doing the same thing. But there's some that, that aren't. And I, sometimes, I think we, we just get so caught up in what we don't have. We just forget to steward what we do have. And I don't want to sound like a broken, a broken record. So I'm going to leave that at that. Now on the flip side of, of all of that. Um, I want to kind of tap into like the the the, the fun and, and the freedom when it comes to singleness and just enjoying that. You really have the freedom and I'm learning to really move how you want to move. And how I'm choosing to move in this single season is really just to love my map. 
as y'all can see, like I said, I addressed this in the beginning of the podcast. I'd be going on dates with myself and I love it. And let me tell you something. I saw this meme on uh, Instagram and Shadi had the best idea. And I said, I'm going to have to do this. I'm going to have to use this. So she goes out, but she, I, you know, I don't do lines or anything. And I really, I am impatient. The Lord is wait, working on me on that. But I, you always have, I'm a reservations girl. If you don't have a reservation, I'm not coming, period. But I always set up my reservations. I typically do like one for the bar or just like one like with a really good seat type deal. But this girl, she's single. She makes her reservations for two people. Now she lying, so I don't wanna lie. <laughs> she literally says, oh, there's gonna be a proposal. So she gets the best seat in the house, top notch service. Cause they're thinking that it's a proposal. But when she gets there, she's like, Oh my gosh, like he's the Nia, da, da, da. So they like still treat her with care. And I'm like, this is so freaking smart. Like I need to do this to get the best seat in the house. Okay, y'all, I'm kidding. I, but I, I'm not gonna lie. That's a, a pretty, you know, good, dope concept. But I don't wanna play like that because I really do wanna be, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get a proposal one day. So we're not even gonna play like that. Um, but I love, I love that. And um, I do wanna just share a couple of tips of, you know, of going on solo dates. I had someone ask me about that on Instagram because I, I did put a poll up before this um, podcast and I said, you know, ask me anything, anything that you want me to address, uh, addressed, Lord, address on this podcast. And someone said, hey, can you, can you share more about your solo dates? How you come up with them? Um, how do you prepare for them and all this stuff? So literally for me, like I, when I, when I know that I'm going on a solo date, I'm setting the mood. Y'all see white roses. These are my, you know, this is my favorite um, flower. I love white roses. So I always have a fresh set of a dozen white roses. I light like one of my favorite candles right now. I have, it's called Bubbly Rose by Bath and Body Works. But my sister, my sorry sister, shout out to Asia, is about to drop a new collection. It's going to be like musk and, um, teak wood and i love those manly scents so i'm going to be purchasing some candles from her uh very soon once this new collection drops and i will definitely have i don't think she would mind i'm gonna have her on the, on the podcast soon um but I, she, she wouldn't mind me linking that information in because her her products are amazing so i always have a candle lit typically i'm drinking a glass of wine or some sparkling water really any just water in in general and then um i I have music, I always have music going. Typically sometimes it's 90s R&B or, um, I get y'all, I get in my country mood. So <laughs> I be listening to country music or sometimes I'm like really sensitive and I'm listening to some sort of like really nice um, worship music. So um, I kind of set the mood that way. I always, no matter what, if I like just take a shower, I, no matter if I took a shower that morning, I'm always gonna take another shower just to kind of calm my body down wash my face, brush my teeth again, and then I start to go, you know, I do my makeup and I get excited because I'm like, I'm saying it to myself, I'm feeling myself, I'm in the mirror. I also start kind of pre-planning outfits, maybe days before my solo day, because I really, I know I'm gonna post about it, I know I'm gonna share it, so I wanna look my best. Um, I will say besides this last solo day, I do pre-plan outfits. This last one, I honestly forgot I made a reservation. So I got the text message and I was like, oh my gosh. So I just pulled something that I've only worn once out of my closet. So I did that. And um, I really, I mean, I have my playlist set for like when I get in the car. And I, I mean, I just go and I walk in with, you know, with so much confidence because, I, you know, too, I think some, some people struggle when they go on the solo dates. Like you see all these couples and you can get down. Child, first of all, I'd be, I'm a people watcher and I'd be eavesdropping. And some people, they got some interesting stuff going on. But secondly, um, I don't know, I kind of feel empowered being able to sit there by myself and really kind of do my own thing. Um, and I'll, you know, you always say compliments oh my gosh, like you're you know, so pretty or, you know, this is so dope that you're not even taking yourself out. And it's not that I'm broadcasting, oh, I'm here on a solo date. It's not that. But my energy commands that. And that just is what it is. And I, I don't have no issue with that. And I hope that I am empowering the women that I see out and even the men that I see out with, with their spouses to go out and to do their own thing um, at some point in a respectful <laughs> manner. And here, here's my dog barking. Bullet. No, 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 no. Hush. Hush. No, sir. We gotta no. Um, so that's the that's the key to solo dates and and all that good stuff. Um, and then uh, 
the other question that I got asked on Instagram, I'm not going to address that yet. There's a lot about my, my job and I'm in the middle of trying to like decide like how I want to just keep everything kind of like my work life and my private life very like separate. And when I say private, I mean really personal because I just don't want any issues there. So I'm going to address those questions probably directly, directly to the people that asked and we will go from there. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, I'm really just enjoying that. And two, I, I and I want to mention this, enjoying your single season isn't just about going on solo dates or treating your, you know, your yourself nice and just pouring into yourself, you know, and, and also pouring into your relationship with God. It's literally just learning to be content in whatever, sing, you know, whatever season you're in. So it's not just about being single in a season. I feel like because I'm mastering how to be content, it doesn't mean I'm stagnant, but it, it means contentment to me equals being grateful for where I'm at, looking for, but also looking forward to where I'm headed and where I'm going, but just being content with where I'm at. And I feel like once I master that, I'm going, once it's mastered, I can move in that sort of contentment in whatever season is next for me. And I think that's just, that's so important because at the end of the day, the song by Biggie, you know, more money, more problems, right? As I continue to elevate, as I continue to, to you know, my circle continues to expand and my team continues to grow, there's going to be other challenges and other things that, you know, come up. But learning how to be content and to be grateful and to be, ooh, to be still will be masters. So I can just take that with me into those seasons. So that's so dope. Um, so I have really enjoyed this, this topic, just sharing about uh, singleness from a biblical sense and from, you know, a, a fun standpoint of, you know, going on solo dates, pouring into yourself, setting the mood daily, treating, uh, treating yourself, pouring into your relationship with, with Christ. I don't know what our next topic is is going to be please feel free to share what you would like to hear we will definitely hopefully be having um a special guest uh next week but i'm excited for this to be the first one that we did live with some video so that's that's so so dope i'm, I'm excited we got the mic so it's just it's really cool to to do that so um, Mapped Out family, I appreciate y'all. I love you. Thank you so much for, for tuning in. Thank you for doing your thing. Um, please continue to just share feedback, share the love in the comments, and please keep coming back to map out your life with me. <laughs>